While pasta has no real phylogeny as it has not been a living organism, we can use it to gain a better understanding of what phylogeny is all about. Today we are going to look at a rooted phylogenetic tree of types of pasta. A rooted tree has a common ancestor for all organisms. The common ancestor is depicted by a node or where branches diverge or split. Internal nodes are all common ancestors, but they are not for all organisms represented on the tree. OTUs, or operational taxonomic units, can be different species, strains of a virus, or even different alleles within a species. These OTUs are based on differences in DNA sequences. In our case, our OTUs are going to be our types of pasta, including spaghetti, farfalle, orzo, pastina, elbow, penne, rigatoni, shells, and rotini. On our tree, it is important to point out anagenesis, which is the evolution within a lineage over time. This is represented by horizontal lines, which are relative to evolutionary time. Organisms evolve continuously over time, so this evolutionary change is shown by the horizontal lines in our phylogenetic tree. Cladogenesis is where we see one lineage branching into two. This leads to the branches in our tree, where evolution now occurs separately for two organisms, leading to biological diversity. In our tree, spaghetti is our outgroup. Our outgroup diverged from the common ancestor earlier than all other OTUs. The outgroup is useful in helping to compare distances between the other OTUs and developing an order of divergence. With our phylogenetic tree, we are going to look at phenotypic traits of pasta to develop our phylogenetic tree. At our first node, we have our common ancestor for all types of pasta. From here, we see the divergence of our outgroup based on the phenotypic trait of long. We also see a divergence of two other groups with the traits medium-sized and small. From our medium branch, we diverge based on whether the pasta is tubular or flat. Tubular then branches based on the characteristics of straight or wavy. Our straight branch then diverges to give penne pasta and rigatoni. Penne is pointed where rigatoni has a blunt end. Our wavy branch gives us elbow pasta and shells. Elbow pasta is whole while shells are split. If we go back to our flat branch, we then see a divergence on the traits of spiral or bowed. Our spiral branch leads to rotoni, where our bowed branch gives us fair folly. If we go even farther back to our small size branch, we only see one more divergence based on the phenotypic trait of being either rice-like or star-shaped. These give orzo and pastina respectively. Now looking at our phenotypic tree as a whole, we can clearly see all of our nodes, like internal nodes, where our branches diverge showing cladogenesis and our common ancestors. We can also see the lengths of our horizontal line showing anagenesis and the relative amount of evolutionary time. For example, we can see that elbows and shells have been around for a shorter amount of time than rigatoni and penne because the horizontal line is on, it is on is shorter and it diverged later on from a common ancestor.